Hey, Bobby, it's uh, Robin and Jonathan here. Thanks for coming on the show, man. Oh, my pleasure. Uh, we're live right now. Uh, how you feeling? You're in Edmonton, right? Yes, I feel great, man. I'm just um, just flew up here today, getting ready for my fight this Friday. So your weigh-ins are Thursday. Today's Tuesday. Uh, when when I spoke to you earlier, you were going to do a training session tonight. Did you do you work out tonight? No, we're doing it a little later. Uh, we just got it. We just kind of cooling down a little bit. So yeah, we're gonna hit it a little later. Oh, cool. And what will you do tonight with a, with a, a fight, you know, two, th not even three days off? What will you do physically tonight? Well, I have my boxing coach here. He, um, he actually travels with me everywhere I go. And um, we're just going to hit some mitts and, and move around, get our footwork in. You know, after a long fight like that, you get kind of wore down a little bit. Just get moving, get, get the blood flowing. And um, nothing too hard because we're kind of in the downtime right now. Hey, yeah. Bobby. Uh, yes. What do you do, like, because I know your strength is stand-up and you're really weak in wrestling. Yeah, right. So do you, uh, do you like, do you, you know, last couple of days, do you focus a little bit on wrestling? What's the deal? Yeah. yeah well, the, the, last, the last few weeks, um, without letting my opponent know, we've been working a lot with hands, you know. Yeah, Our yeah. motto is to put the jumper cables on people and start knocking people out. I mean, that's the crowd wants to see, so that's what we're going to give them. Yeah, when a 270-pound beast hits a guy with the right hand, it can be a pretty scary scenario. Um, uh, so how'd the fight go with uh, Jason Guida? It, it went to a three-round decision, right, that you handily won. How did you feel? I haven't seen the fight. How did you feel? I, well, I didn't feel too great with that one, um, simply because I went in there with the wrong frame of mind. My trainers and, and everybody that watched the fight said it was a good fight for several different reasons. Being able to go 15 minutes, you know, that's a test that every every MMA guy needs. Yeah. Whether he can go the, the distance and still be okay. So we got that. And then and then there was a lot of tape. So that's one thing that you need is, is tape to, to go with to training. Because if you don't have anything, like my first match, I had 41-second TKO. So after that, we really didn't have anything to go by because it, it ended so quick. This time we have we had 15 minutes of stuff to look at and make improvements. So I think that was that's that's a good part of what I got from the match. I didn't get really hurt, didn't really get tested or anything like that. So, but it's a great experience, like to, to get a, to a change rounds. opponent to go through you know uh, three rounds like that that early in your career. That must have been a great experience for you. Yeah, yeah. Well, I always you know I'm kind of a, I'm kind of I, I wouldn't say so much a workaholic, but I, I like to train. So I'm not one that's going to get burned out. In 15 minutes, I knew that wasn't going to happen. But being in there, it's another thing to just test yourself, just to make sure you uh, what you believe actually happens. Yeah. Hey, and Bobby, how do, yeah. how do you how did you feel at the end? Like, did you feel like 80 percent, or did you feel a little worn down? I mean, you know, 15 minutes is, is still that's a For long a fight. Big guy. When, you, when yeah. you're talking full intensity, you're a huge guy. How do you feel at the end of that? Yeah, I was pretty worn out. I think I was about 99 percent. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, pretty worn out. Nice. And now, do you go by Franklin Roberto Lashley, or do you go by Bobby? Oh, man, I have to kill you for saying that. <laughs> you want me to kill him? I can. I would be glad to kill him for you, Bobby. <laughs> okay. We're going we're gonna to fight afterwards yeah, on that one. Yeah, he's been drinking. I'm going to take this guy out. So, uh, so now, you've got Mike Cook coming up. What's, uh, what's the deal with Mike? What do you know about him? What do you know about him? I don't know very much. I know the guy likes to, um, I know he likes to bang. I know he has a lot of heart. I know that he, he has a handful of fights under his belt. And, and I, think his, I think his claim to fame so far was they had that BET Iron Ring Challenge deal, oh, yeah. and I think he won that. Yeah. So that's all I really know. And, so, and weight-wise, how much you are weighing him by? Any idea? Well, I'll be coming in probably about 250, 255, somewhere in there, and he weighs, he'll probably be coming in at 240. So not a lot. And is there a limit? To what you can weigh in 265. The is it 265? 265. So, so when you, why wouldn't you just come in, roll in right at 265? Because you're like a, a big guy, right? Well, I just, I just train so hard. I train so hard. Um, oh, you're uh, just walking my, my, around. My with boxing that. coach, a real good boxing coach. His name is Freak Demont. He trains me boxing, and I mean, he, he, he pushed me to a limit. So I mean, I'm dropping between wrestling classes, jujitsu practice, and boxing classes. I'm dropping like 10 pounds a day. So I'm trying to eat everything I can to keep it up. So it's kind of hard to keep my weight up there at 260, 265. And then I've been staying pretty active with my fight. Like, I try not to take a break. So it's hard to get that downtime where I can bulk up so that I can go. Um, my next opponent is Bob Sapp. He's coming in about 370. So after this fight, I'm going to take two weeks up, just kind of bed and pig out and try to get my weight up and then start training again and try to come in maybe about 260. 
Right. Wow. And and I'm just gonna switch the subject just for a second. Then I'm gonna come back to this. Um, are you like are you a married guy? Or are you single? What's the deal? Whoa. <laughs> no, I'm not, I'm not married. Uh, I am in a relationship. Okay. And um, and and what does she think? Like, what does she think of this uh, ab absurd sport and the amount of training that you do and the and the travel and everything? I mean, what does she think of it? She loves it. I mean, um, she's very supportive in, in everything that I do. So um, when I when I decided to do it, she knows that I had a, I had the wrestling background. I wrestled for several years. Yeah. And she knows what kind of she knows how I train. She knows how I go about that. So when I wanted to do this, she just said, "Okay, if you're gonna do it, you need to get up and go. You need to start training. You need to get ready." She doesn't let me do anything half half ass. So. Yeah. And I don't think that's your style, anyways, right? I mean, not at all. Yeah. If you're gonna do this, you're gonna do this to really to to come in and make your mark, right? Which you have been so far. And yeah. uh, it, it like we we were talking about it earlier, and we thought we're gonna talk to you about things other than fucking wrestling, you know, other than where you came from and your background, because everybody must talk to you to death about that, right? Yeah. <laughs> Just straight yeah. up, yeah. yeah exactly. So <laughs> let's skip that shit. Yeah. And uh, and let's go on to. Uh, um, uh, now, your girlfriend, how long have you guys been together? Uh, about, man, I hope I don't get this wrong. Yeah, she killed me. <laughs> about a year, year, year and a half, year, about a year. So yeah. you, you've, been ring, you've been ring shopping then? What's yeah. that? You've been out ring shopping this week? <laughs> yeah, not yet. Okay, we can go back to wrestling if you yeah. guys want. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's fair. Well, if you, if you, if you guys, are you guys familiar with the rest of WWE? That's more MMA. Oh, MMA for sure. Yeah. Okay. For sure. She was with me in the WWE. So oh, we, she... were, we were really good friends before we even got together. Oh, okay. Cool. She, was, she, was she a WWE like uh, per participant model kind of thing? She was, yeah, she was a diva. She was a model and everything oh, cool. else. Beforehand. When do you cut sex out? Do you, uh, do, you, uh, do you go for it right the night before? Or what's up? Well, I tell you what. This is, this is what I've heard. And I've had two different things with her. They say that you don't have to stop. Yeah. Because they say the more you do it, the more your body produces testosterone, and the more testosterone you produce, that's kind of your anger and your grit to go out there and fight. I right? like it. So you're uh, you're of the mind you're going to do it then. Yeah. <laughs> nice. <laughs> so uh, we uh, thanks for coming on the show. Before we let you go, let's ask you about the, the your fight coming up at MFC. Right. You've been up in Canada to perform with the WWE before, right? Yes. Yeah. And uh, is this your first time in Edmonton or no? I, I've been here before, but it was a very brief stay. It was maybe like just one day in, one day out. And uh, so uh, can you give us a prediction? I mean, you don't know a lot about your opponent, but you know the kind of shape that you're in and what you've been working on. What's going to happen on Friday night? I am going to I'm gonna come out there like a beast, and I'm just going to attack him until he can't move anymore. I, I think what I'm going to do is, uh, you know, I've always tried to play the game. You know, MMA fighters, they touch gloves, they top around, and they, you know, feel your opponent out. And that's what everybody wants to do. This time, as soon as he touch gloves, I'm going to attack him. <laughs> and I'm just going mean, to, if he can weather the storm, he's only he's going to be able to weather the storm, but only for a short amount of time. We're going to try to end this fight in the first period fairly quickly. We're going to pick him up, we're going to slam him, we're going to bash him out a little bit. When he comes up, I'm going to knock him out. Hey, that's hey, my prediction. Has he heard you say this yet? Like, has he heard this? Does he know that's what's going nope. on? No, but there's a press conference tomorrow, so I guess that's what I'll be saying during the press conference. Nice, uh, yeah. Nice. So he knows he doesn't know yet that he's dying on on, uh, on Saturday. <laughs> yeah, that you're going to kill him and possibly eat him. Yeah, and then no, no he doesn't know yet. Yeah. What do you nice. do against a guy like Bob Sapp, who's yeah. just crazy huge? Well, um, well, right right now we've just been focusing all of our attention on the fight that we have in yeah. hand. We haven't even really thought about Bob yet. After we, after we take this guy out, we're going to go back to the drawing board. We're going to look at some tapes from him. We kind of know what he's going to do anyway. And we kind of know what, what, his, what his faults are. His, his faults are his Cardi. gas, his gas tank. Yeah, yes, Cardi. Probably two minutes to go and swing everything he has. Yeah. And then after that, he's done. And then we're going to pick him apart. For That's sure. That's what most people want to do with him. I think, um, I think what people want to see is people want to see you go at him. So when he charges them, they charge with him. Yeah. And we're going to clash. And then we're going to start throwing. I think you That'd can you can exhaust fight. him by just you know pummeling with him like just get, get in there and wrestle standing. If you get him down and you're on top, great. And if you don't, you, well, by the time you back away, keep two, circling and pound that guy out. Yeah, two three minutes and he's done, right? Yeah, that's gonna. I yeah, was, that's the plan. Yeah.